Welcome to our Australia Briefing Show, folks. Let's dive into today's news cocktail, shaken not stirred, with a twist of the extraordinary and a dash of the unexpected. First up, we've got the UCI Track Championships over in Hong Kong, where despite the presence of world-class cyclists, the stands looked a bit, lonely, with only about 25% of seats filled. It seems even the allure of Olympic qualifying points and local riders zipping around couldn't pack the house. Organizers are crossing their fingers for a last-minute dash to the ticket booths over the weekend. Meanwhile, in the depths of the sea, the Dutch Navy is getting a shiny upgrade with four new submarines, thanks to a cool 5.6 billion euro deal with France's naval group. These aren't your granddad's subs, we're talking about enhanced intelligence capabilities and some serious striking power. And it's not just the Dutch getting a boost, local companies will be diving into construction and outfitting, too. Switching gears to something a bit more grounded, let's talk about COVID vaccines. With over 13.5 billion doses jabbed worldwide, we've seen a spectrum of side effects, from the mild and fleeting to the rare and serious. Despite these, the vaccines have been a game-changer, credited with saving around 20 million lives in their first year alone. Yet, with all this good news, there's still a snag, vaccine hesitancy remains a stumbling block, fueled by a cocktail of concerns and conspiracy theories. In other news, the US had a heads-up that Nauru might swap its diplomatic plus-one from Taiwan to China, and Japan's getting ready to show off its next-gen fighter jets on the global market. Meanwhile, sports fans, keep your eyes peeled for Tottenham's Radu Dragusen stepping up due to Mickey van de Ven's injury. And for those craving a Big Mac, you might have had a bit of a wait, thanks to a software hiccup at McDonald's affecting several countries. And for a bit of a bite, a 13-year-old girl had a too-close encounter with a shark in Queensland, thankfully with minor injuries. Plus, for all you sports enthusiasts, there's a packed weekend lineup, from Australian rules football to tennis. And chocolate lovers, take note, climate change and rising demand might just make your sweet treats a bit pricier. Lastly, for the wine connoisseurs, there's a new Pinot Noir on the block that's winning hearts across generations. So, there you have it, a whirlwind tour of today's happenings. Stay tuned for the detailed scoop on all these stories and more. Please keep watching for more in-depth coverage. Team GB in Australia produce compelling races, but Track Nations Cup falls flat. South China Morning Post. The UCI Track Championships in Hong Kong saw low attendance despite the presence of world-class track cyclists. Only around 25% of the available seats were occupied on the opening day, raising concerns about ticket sales for the rest of the event. The championships are particularly important this year as they offer qualifying points for the Summer Olympic Games. Despite efforts to attract fans, including fair ticket prices and the presence of local riders, attendance has been disappointing. Organizers are hoping for a rush of interest over the weekend. French company Naval Group has been selected to build four new submarines for the Dutch Navy. Associated Press French defense company Naval Group has been selected to build four new diesel-electric submarines for the Dutch Navy. The deal is worth 5.6 billion euros, 6.1 billion dollars, and will see the first two submarines delivered within 10 years of signing the contract. The new submarines will be an improvement on the existing fleet, with increased striking power and enhanced intelligence capabilities. Dutch companies will benefit from the construction and outfitting of the submarines. French builder Naval Group was chosen over Swedish builder Saab Kockums and ThyssenKrupp from Germany. How safe are COVID vaccines? Here's what we know now. Bloomberg. U.S. new Nauru might cut ties to Taiwan before it did, official says. South China Morning Post. The U.S. was aware that the Pacific Island nation of Nauru was considering switching its diplomatic ties from Taiwan to mainland China before it formally did so in January, a senior U.S. State Department official has said. Daniel Kreitenbrink, Assistant Secretary for East Asian and Pacific Affairs, told the Senate Foreign Relations Committee that the U.S. had been working with partners to meet Nauru's concerns but that the nation had decided to flip to China. Kreitenbrink warned Taiwan's three remaining Pacific partners, Tuvalu, the Marshall Islands and Palau, to be cautious in their dealings with China. After months of talks, Japan's ruling coalition agrees to allow the sale of its next-gen fighter jets. Diplomat. Japan's ruling Liberal Democratic Party, LDP, and its junior partner, Komei Ito, have agreed to relax the country's strict defense export rules, allowing the international sale of the next-generation fighter jets being co-developed with the UK and Italy. The move marks a shift in Japan's post-war policy of maintaining an exclusively defense-oriented stance. 
Prime Minister Kishida Fumio stated that relaxing export rules would reduce production costs, support national security, and ensure Japan is recognized as a reliable partner in international defense joint development programs. Japan aims to reduce its dependence on the U.S. for defense equipment procurement and foster its own defense industry. Draghi's in to get Spurs shot due to Van de Ven injury. Yahoo! Tottenham Hotspur head coach Enge Postekoglu has confirmed that Radu Dragusin will start for the club for the first time in their match against Fulham on March 12. Dragusin, who joined Tottenham from Genoa for £25 million in January, replaced Mickey van de Ven in the second half of Tottenham's 4-0 win against Aston Villa on March 5. Postekoglu also said that he hoped van de Ven would be back after the international break to play in the final 10 Premier League games of the season and that Richerlison could be available for the Fulham game after recovering from a knee injury. McDonald's software glitch halts orders in several countries. Deutsche Welle. McDonald's restaurants in Japan, Hong Kong, Australia, New Zealand, and the UK experienced system failures on Friday, affecting their ability to take and process orders. McDonald's Japan reported a system failure and later said that many restaurants had temporarily shut. The issues appeared to be technical and were related to the mobile ordering system and self-ordering kiosks. McDonald's said it did not suspect a cybersecurity incident. Girl, 13, bitten by shark at Australian beach. The Independent. A 13-year-old girl has been injured in a shark attack in Queensland, Australia. The teenager was treated for minor injuries to her back, legs, and abdomen and was taken to hospital in a stable condition. The girl was calm during treatment but her parents were shocked by the incident. Sharks are not usually spotted at Bargera Beach, where the attack took place. This is the latest in a series of shark attacks in Australia, with 17 reported last year, including four fatalities. Sports on TV for March 16 to 17. Associated Press. The article provides a schedule of sporting events taking place on Saturday, March 16 and Sunday, March 17. The events include Australian rules football, auto racing, basketball, college baseball, college basketball, men's and women's college gymnastics, college hockey, men's, college lacrosse, men's and women's, college rugby, men's, college softball, golf, horse racing, MLB baseball, NBA basketball, NHL hockey, rodeo, soccer, men's, speed skating, and tennis. The schedule is subject to change. What price chocolate as climate change hits cocoa crops of poor farmers? South China Morning Post. The global chocolate industry is facing a number of challenges, including climate change, deforestation, low farm gate prices, and child labor. However, the growing demand for chocolate in China, coupled with rising affluence and interest in Western products, could have significant implications for global demand. China currently consumes just 0.1 kg of chocolate per person per year, compared to 1.2 kg in Japan and 4.4 kg in the US. If Chinese demand were to grow to Japanese levels, it would have a colossal impact on global demand. As a result, production is shifting away from West Africa and into Asia, with countries such as Indonesia, Malaysia, and Thailand looking to adopt more sustainable practices and improve livelihoods for cocoa farmers. The new Pinot Noir is a wine for all generations. Telegraph. A new style of Pinot Noir, which I'll call the new Pinot Noir, NPN, is becoming increasingly popular among wine drinkers of all ages. Unlike traditional Pinot Noir from Burgundy, the NPN is smooth and uncomplicated, with a tang of cherries or raspberries. It is a refreshing red that fits into the new style of wines favored by Gen Z and Millennials, but it still has body and concentration. The NPN is a versatile wine that can be enjoyed with a variety of foods and is suitable for relaxed social occasions. Mankini wearing Olympic hopeful in intensive care after fall. Telegraph. Australian show jumper Shane Rose has suffered multiple injuries, including several broken bones and a concussion, in a fall during a cross-country schooling session. Just three weeks ago, Rose was cleared to return to competition after apologizing for a controversial fancy dress outfit he wore at a recent event. However, the injuries he sustained may jeopardize his participation in the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. Rose had recently confirmed his qualification for the Games, but his injuries have thrown his participation into serious doubt. Last month, Rose faced controversy over a video showing him wearing a mankini while riding a horse at a show jumping meet, but he was reinstated by Equestrian Australia and will face no further action. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective.
Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.